Welcome back. It's time for our monthly roundup of what's on stage and spring is a busy time in local theaters, both professionally and for high school musicals. Post Gazette senior theater critic Chris Rawson is here with some reviews and previews. Good and morning. Some news and itself. some big news, right, right? Right. But we start with Heisenberg at the public theater because that just has this week to run. Okay. It's a uh, romantic comedy, or they think it's a romantic comedy. They pitched it with a uh, whole bunch of hearts and flowers and cupids and so on. <laughs> it's actually a better play than that, and that makes for a bit of a trouble in the uh, in the production. I guess Heisenberg to most people means the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, mm -hmm. and the idea is that's a metaphor for this youngish woman, well, 40ish, and this oldest man, oldish man, about 70ish, who meet meet cute. She comes on to him, he can't believe it, and we track their relationship. But as you know, the, the uncertainty principle says that, you know, the molecule and motion, you can't quite measure them at the same time, you don't quite know where they are, which is a nice metaphor for these two people in their relationship. But the story uh, by Simon Stevens is really, I think, much darker than this mm. production at the Public Theater acknowledges. They're doing hearts and flowers, but we're seeing a whole lot of enigmatic questions, ambivalence about love. What is it? So I think it's a better play than we actually get to see. I see. Okay. And let's talk about Jane Eyre, because this is running through uh, April 28th. Right. It just opens this coming weekend. Mm -hmm. It's at Picked, which performs in the Fred Rogers studio at the WQED building. And of course, it's a classic story of morality and passion, as Pick likes to say, uh, by Charlotte Bronte, a very important novel uh, adapted here by Alan Stanford. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to include the sort of side story of Mr. Rochester's previous wife being who's insane and being held in the attic. Uh, but we'll see a lot about Jane Eyre in her relationship with Mr. Rochester. Well, and we had some really exciting news. I know, I know, I know. I want to go huzzah, <laughs> huzzah, huzzah. Critics aren't supposed to do this, but Toronto. It's funny because the uh, the uh, PNC Broadway series in announcing mm -hmm. their Broadway series coming up next year mm -hmm. said, "Well, this is a pretty good season," which is, you know, very humble underplaying because it's really a fabulous season. It looks that way, yeah. yeah. And it starts with Hamilton, which, which is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you right. know, since the last <laughs> greatest thing. And it really is. I finally saw it in London six weeks ago, and it's a wonderful musical. Uh, but it's also accompanied by two other new prize-winning musicals, Dear Evan Hansen mm -hmm. and uh, Come From Away. And then my favorite, in a way, of the whole series is a play called The Play That Goes Wrong. It's a farce about a play that goes wrong, not a musical, just a play. But I've seen it in London. I saw it in New York. I went back to see it in New York to wow, take my granddaughter. Wow, is that good? Yeah, because we wanted to have a great laugh. Uh, there's Anastasia a nice lush score by Stephen Flaherty, a Pittsburgher, and his partner Lynn Ahrens. Um, and uh, there's uh, Fiddler on the Roof, which is the only revival in the whole package. And then Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I guess we all know what that is. So right. it's a wonderful bundle of seven shows, really quite amazing. It looks like it's going to be a great season for them. Let's also talk about the Kelly Critics. What yeah, is this? Yeah, yeah. So the Kelly Critics, one of my favorite projects, one that involves me a lot. So the Gene Kelly Awards is run by the CLO and mm -hmm. it involves high school musicals around Allegheny County. The Kelly Critics is sort of a little sideline to that. We get students from those high schools who go to other people's musicals and write reviews. Oh, interesting. I get to edit them to take out anything that really shouldn't appear in the paper <laughs> uh, and fix up some of the typos. And then we put them online on the Post Gazette website. And I, I want people to know about it because they're kind of fun to read, these student reviews of other students' musicals. You just go to the uh, arts and entertainment page of the Post Gazette website, and then you go to the theater and dance sub page of that. And uh, on the right, you'll see a box about high school musicals, current. Uh, current coverage, click there, and there they'll line up. There are only a couple of them there so far, uh, but we got I've got several more waiting for me to edit them. They're starting to flow in. They'll be there throughout this month and into May. Well, I know you're such a busy guy trying to get to all of these plays and musicals. Do you ever find yourself at one of these high school musicals? I know that they've just grown tremendously, these I know, tremendous I know, productions I know. now. Well, for the first 20-some years, I was regularly a judge. For the oh, Kelly really? Awards, and I went to the musicals, and I would review a number of them in the Post Gazette. 
uh, uh, you know, I've, I've, you I've done so much <laughs> of that that occasionally I'll go to a high school musical, and it's true. It's a lot of fun. It has a lot to do with the energy in the audience, feeding off the energy on stage, right. the love going back and forth can be a marvelous experience. Well, and it's always neat. Sometimes, occasionally, we'll have one of the folks from these musicals, from these big productions, come back here from Pittsburgh that's now performing in New York. So it's always right. neat. They, yes. go, they go from the high schools into our training programs in the colleges and then off into the profession. And that's right. And well, they'll come back as part of the Broadway series. That's right, and sometimes they do. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Chris Rawson, senior theater critic for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and regular PTL contributor.